Dun da dun da dun da dun da 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 da. If you're thankful and you know it, say amen, amen. If you're thankful and you know it, say amen, amen. If you're thankful and you know it, then your life will surely show it. If you're thankful and you know it, say amen, amen. If you're thankful and you know it, clap your hands, clap, clap. If you're thankful and you know it, clap your hands, clap, clap. If you're thankful and you know it, then your life will surely show it. If you're thankful and you know it, clap your hands, clap, clap. If you're thankful and you know it, stomp your feet, stomp, stomp. If you're thankful and you know it, stomp your feet, stomp, stomp. If you're thankful and you know it, then your life will surely show it. If you're thankful and you know it, stomp your feet, stomp, stomp. If you're thankful and you know it, two, all three, amen. Clap your hands, stomp your feet. If you're thankful and you know it, two, all three, amen. Clap your hands, stomp your feet, stomp, stomp. If you're thankful and you know it, then your life will surely show it. If you're thankful and you know it, two, all three, amen. Clap your hands, stomp your feet, stomp, stomp. Oh, you boys and girls, we just want to wish you a very happy Thanksgiving. It's great to see you again at Hope in God Bible Club. See you next time. Bye-bye. Welcome back to Hope in God Bible Club. This is Miss Heather, and today we are going to be talking about what is Thanksgiving and how to have a thankful heart. That's right. I want to welcome each one of you boys and girls back to Hope in God Bible Club. Now you might say, Miss Heather, what is that funny looking costume you have on today? Well, I will explain that in a few short minutes. But right now, I want to focus on our theme verse for Hope in God Bible Club. And before that, I want each one of us to welcome each other back to Hope in God Bible Club. So on the count of three, one, two, three, let's welcome each other by saying, we're so glad you were here. Here we go. One, two, three. We're so glad you're here. And yes, we are. Boys and girls, this is what our theme verse says. And it's found in Psalm 78, verse 7. It says that they, talking about all you beautiful children from all over the world, might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. That's right, boys and girls. Now, let's think about what that means. That means that no matter what you're going through, even when you have tears rolling down your face and you're crying, that God will make you happy again because he is the only one that can give you hope for today, tomorrow, and forever in your future. And he also tells you right from wrong because he loves you and he wants to bless you. That's right. At this time, we are going to have a short little prayer time. And this is going to be a time of praising God in our prayer time today. Dear Heavenly Father, we raise our hands to bless your high and holy name. Dear Heavenly Father, and we want to thank you for our free country where we're our free country, where we can worship you openly, read our Bibles, go to church as families, and to have thankful hearts at all times, even when sometimes bad things happen. We know that all things are not good that happen to us, but that all things work together for our good. As you tell us in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, <clears throat> we praise you in your almighty name for all of your goodnesses in jesus name we pray amen boys and girls i hope you have brought your bible to hope and god bible club tonight and we are going to be talking about thanksgiving to god boys and girls please open up your bibles to the very middle of your bible to psalms chapter 92 and verse 1. this is a very exciting verse and it tells us it is good to give thanks unto god Yes, thanks unto the Lord, and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. Boys and girls, do you have a thankful heart? Have you ever wondered why we celebrate Thanksgiving? Let me share with you how we came to celebrate Thanksgiving Day. Did you know that over 400 years ago, in the country of England, and I'm going to show you where England is on my globe, that... 
everybody was told what church they must attend. Here is the country of England. It's also called the United Kingdom, and it's right above the country of Ireland. And we are going to be talking about England for a few minutes and how the pilgrims, that is who Miss Heather is dressed up as tonight, traveled all the way over here to the free world of America. That's right. So these people that lived in England that were later called pilgrims, at first they were called separatists, and I'm going to tell you why. So everybody was told what church they must attend. That's right. They were not allowed to decide what church would be the most Bible-believing church to go to. Some Christians, those who knew the Lord Jesus as having been saved from their sins, knew that it was wrong for their government to tell them where to go to church. So these Christians, and they were also called separatists because they wanted to separate from the Church of England. Because the Church of England was not exactly teaching them according to the Bible. So these Christians started churches that were more like the Bible said they should be. The actions of the Christians made the government officials very angry. That's right. And the officials said the Christians were disobeying the law. So government officers, like police officers, arrested many of them and put them in prison. Some were even threatened to be put to death. What do you think gave the pilgrims and the Puritans the strength to stand up for the Bible? They remembered that the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 5, verse 29, we must obey God rather than man. Even though these Christian pilgrims and Puritans were threatened boys and girls, they refused to stop worshiping God, wanting rather to obey the Bible's commands, even if it meant going to prison. Finally, they said, let's go to live in the new world and worship God there. In the new world, we will be free from these rules and laws of the government that are different from Bible truths. They wanted to obey God. That's right. Boys and girls, does anyone know where the new world is? The new world is what America was called in those long ago days. Very few people from Europe have ever been to America. And as I just showed you, England on our globe, England is in the continent of Europe. That's right. Okay, so very few people from Europe had ever been to America, but they had heard of the Indians who already lived there. That's right. Christopher Columbus, who was an Italian explorer, had found Indians living in the New World when he, when he had come to discover America 100 years earlier, before the Pilgrims and Puritans came. So, let's learn a poem today. In 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Can you say that with Miss Heather? I know you boys and girls are so smart. I know you can say that with me. Here we go. In 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. That's right. Well, to the Indians, it might have seemed like the old world, but to the people of Europe, it was new and exciting. But the pilgrims almost didn't make it to America because in the middle of the ocean, when they were right in the middle of their trip, going from Europe all the way over here to America, where they would land in Cape Cod, Massachusetts, boys and girls, in the very middle of their long, long, long trip, this main mast of their ship broke in the middle of a very bad storm, like a hurricane, like some of you boys and girls have been involved in. Yes, we just had Hurricane Helene here on the East Coast, Southeast Coast, I should say. Now, so these sailboats used sails, as you see the sails here on this Mayflower ship, boys and girls, they used sails to catch the wind, much like you use the wind to catch a kite that you want to fly in your backyard or maybe at the park. These sailboats didn't have motors to keep them going, so the pilgrims almost turned back to England. But just then, God helped them to fix the broken beam with some tools that they brought with them to work with in the new world. And so they were able to keep going all the way to America. The people who traveled to America so they could worship God freely were called pilgrims. At first, they were called separatists, like I told you, because they wanted to separate from the Church of England. But did you know that God calls all of those of us that are saved 
pilgrims. And so we are going to turn to the book of 1 Peter, which is in the New Testament towards the back of your Bible, chapter 2 and verse 11. And it says, Dearly beloved, I beseech you, or I call you, as strangers and pilgrims. It says abstain, that means stay away from fleshly lust. That means the sinful things of this world, which war against the soul. Satan tries to blind us with sin in this world so that we can't see Jesus and so that we can't see our sins because he doesn't want us to be saved from our sins, but God does. So this verse also means that this world, as we know it on earth today, is not our forever home. We are just passing through for a short time, just like the pilgrims. This home on earth is like a temporary tent you might set up for camping. It doesn't last really a long time. It's just designed to last a short time for a short trip. And <clears throat> so the Bible tells us that for the Christian, heaven is our forever home. Boys and girls, when the pilgrims landed at Plymouth Rock in 1620 in that year, they signed a very, very important paper called the Mayflower Compact. Let me explain what that was. All the men signed this agreement in this important paper that said that they were going to be loyal to God. They were going to be faithful to God. And they all agreed to work together to form this new country's government according to God's holy word, the Bible. That's right. So, boys and girls, the first year was very difficult for the pilgrims. It was hard for them. They had to clear the land by cutting down trees by hand because they didn't have any chainsaws back then. They took wood from the trees to use for the building of their homes because there were not any stores like Home Depot back then. They also had to find food like berries for their families to stay alive. Many of the pilgrims died in the first year due to sickness and the hard conditions. That's right. They didn't have any grocery stores to go to. And in fact, the pilgrims had to live on this cold boat in the middle of the winter and travel in between where that boat was anchored down and then get in the water and go the rest of the way to the seashore to start building their homes and also to look for food. So it's not surprising that many of the pilgrims died in the first year because of all the sickness and harsh conditions. In fact, the pilgrims would not have made it at all if it wouldn't have been for the help they received from the friendly Indians, as you see here in the picture, and you see here my Indian doll. So these Indians showed them how to plant food that would grow here in America. The pilgrims were thankful for the comfort and strength that the Lord Jesus Christ, their best friend, gave them. You too can remember that Jesus is your best friend and he is on your side no matter what you're going through. Even if someone you love very much in your family just died or whatever other hard times you are going through, never forget that, that Jesus is always your best friend and he will never leave you. So the pilgrims did hard work to build their own houses out of wood that had once been a big dynamic forest. That's right. To build a house, you needed long pieces of wood, like something that you might use to build a treehouse boys or a dollhouse girls. That's right. What do you think it would be like for you to help your parents cut down trees in the middle of a cold, long, hard winter in order to build your family house? Remember, boys and girls, they did not have any tractors or big pieces of equipment to help them like bulldozers either. The pilgrims only had their strong arms, families, and neighbors to do the work. And, of course, strength that God gave them, supernatural strength. That's right, to do things that they didn't feel like doing. Finally, they were able to build their first church, school, family house, workshops, and stores. How exciting. Now, remember, boys and girls, even though they had houses, the pilgrims still did not have electricity. So that means that they did not have a stove yet. 
to cook their Thanksgiving turkey on. But instead, they, they um, had open fireplaces for heating their homes and for cooking their food. The fireplaces also provided a small amount of light. And in addition to that, boys and girls, the pilgrims used candles like this candle that you see Miss Heather has. And the candles provided them another small amount of light. Like you boys and girls might have just used your candles recently if you were living close to Miss Heather in the southeast when we just went through Hurricane Helene. That's right. So the pilgrims used candles that they made out of animal fat or beeswax that gave them a little more light in their homes. That's right. Well, boys and girls, they also made furniture out of wood from the trees. The pilgrims also made their own dishes and tools like hammers and axes and things like that. They even made their own clothes and their own shoes. Wow. The pilgrims made themselves warm coats out of wool from sheep and strong shoes with big buckles. Yes, big funny looking buckles. And you might say, well, how did they make their shoes? Well, they got very creative. They took leather from animals to make their shoes. Boys and girls, even though their life was not easy, they were very thankful to God that they were free to worship God according to the Bible here in America. They also thanked God for their families, for their Bibles, for their churches, for their food, and for their homes. Well, boys and girls, Miss Heather has another picture to share with you. Their leader, William Bradford, had learned to love God as a young boy about the age of some of you boys. As a teenager, William had been put in a prison in England just because he had tried to leave England and go to a free country where he could worship God in the Bible way. In 1620, William Bradford joined the pilgrims on board this ship called the Mayflower to go to the new world called America. One year later, he became a governor. Boys and girls, if you live in the United States of America, each state has its own leader called a governor. That's right. That's what the word governor means. Governor Bradford got along well with the Indians and was a wise leader helping the pilgrims with their problems. He wrote a very important book called Of Plymouth Plantation. And in his book, it told about their first days and years in the new world. William Bradford said, we must set aside a special time to give thanks to God for all his blessings. And they did. Here, let me show you a painting that Miss Heather did. That is going to show you all about this wonderful celebration that the pilgrims had. That's right. I hope all of you can see this painting. So, what a wonderful celebration they had. Their Indian friends brought wild turkey and deer meat and even taught them how to fish. Do you boys and girls like to go fishing? Yes. And the ladies cooked pumpkin squash corn, fish, and all sorts of food. Do you see that big table on this Heather's painting where the pilgrims are sitting down there with the Indians and they are praying there in that picture. That's right, with all that food in front of them. They gather together with their Indian friends around long tables and outdoors to eat, laugh, sing, and thank God for the good things he had done for them. In Psalms 100 verses 2a and 3, it tells us, Know ye the Lord, he is God. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. That's right. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. The pilgrims, Puritans, and Indians thanked God for his goodnesses, for family, food, and for the many hard times he had helped them to get through. What can you thank God for today? Over the years, Americans wanted to keep on remembering this special time and day of thanking God, just like the pilgrims did. This special day of giving thanks to God became known as Thanksgiving Day in the United States of America. So guess what happened? Our first president, and you know what his name is, it is George Washington. He set aside 
this special Thanksgiving time and later on in our American history, our 16th president, and his name was Abraham Lincoln, made Thanksgiving Day a holy day, or we call it today a holiday. In 1941, the U.S. Congress, those are the leaders of our country, boys and girls, they made the fourth Thursday of November a legal holiday that we know today as our Happy Thanksgiving Day. Well, at this time, boys and girls, Miss Heather is going to take away this ocean scene. That's right. So let me set it down over here for a minute. Sorry, I am off the camera for a second there. And at this time, I'm going to put up this grassy background. So we are going to make this look a little bit different up here on our flannel graph board. So let me get this stretched across here and cover up this ocean. That's right. All right. And let's put up some pretty trees that God made. That's right. Some pretty trees. And I am going to put Jesus up here and I am going to put up a group of men here so I hope that you can see all of these men here on my flannel graph board and I'm going to put up one more set of trees over here on the far left side okay and I'm going to tell you why I put up those pretty pictures here in just a minute today Americans celebrate Thanksgiving by eating many of the same foods these early settlers ate. But sadly, many people today do not remember to thank God, the very one who was the reason for our first Thanksgiving celebration, as you see over here on this painting that Miss Heather painted for you. People many times take what God gives them and forget to thank him. That reminds me. <clears throat> of a true Bible story found over in the New Testament in the book of Luke chapter 17 starting in verse 11. It tells of a time when these people were not thankful to God. That's right. So let's read about it. And it came to pass as he, that is talking about Jesus. You see Jesus here on the flannel graph board. As he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst, that means through the middle, of Samaria and Galilee, two cities in Israel. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers. So, here are the ten lepers up on my flannel graph board and the number ten. And they lifted up their voices and said, Master, Jesus, have mercy on us. Boys and girls, do you know what leprosy is? You see these spots on my picture here? Leprosy makes white spots all over a leper. And it eats away at your skin and your fingers and your toes and your nervous system. And it's very, very painful and it's very, very catchy. Like when you have strep throat, you might easily give it to someone else in your family. So these people had to be separated in a place where they were taken away from their families. And it was called the leper colony. <clears throat> and when he, that's talking about Jesus, saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. The priests were kind of like pastors today, boys and girls. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. They had to take that step of faith and obey God. Because God knows how we can be healed from a physical sickness or how we can be healed in our soul and be saved from our sins. So it says, and it came to pass as they went, they were cleansed. That means they were healed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. <coughs> Excuse me. And fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Do you see him? He is the one, the only one, that came back to thank Jesus. And Jesus answering and said, Were there not 
10 cleansed. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Where are the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God, save this one stranger. And he said unto them, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Yes, they had to take that step of faith and go to the priest to be cleansed, just like Jesus told them. Well, boys and girls, what does it mean? So the Lord Jesus, who is God, met 10 very, really sick men. The 10 men were lepers. They had a disease called leprosy. In those days, there was not any medicine to heal you from leprosy, and many people died from it. So Jesus healed all the men from this deadly sea, but only this one man came back to thank him for it. Didn't Jesus heal all 10? 10 minus 1 equals 9. That's right. Where were the other nine? Only one returned thanks and glorified God and thanked him for the healing. Isn't it sad that they did not thank God for healing them too? It is a good thing to thank God for everything. But can you think of the most wonderful thing of all to thank God for? What do you think it is? The greatest thing to be thankful for is that Jesus Christ came down from heaven to earth to save us from our sins. Let me show you a picture of a little boy here with a black heart, boys and girls. Sin is often pictured in the Bible as the disease of leprosy. That's right. Leprosy separated people from their families, and it reminds us that sin separates us from a holy God forever. You might be thinking, what is sin? Well, boys and girls, sin is anything we do that is unholy and breaks God's commandments. Let's talk about it for a minute. Can you think of some sins that you have done? How about saying mean words? Or hitting someone? Bullying someone at school, maybe? Or disobeying mom and dad? Or telling a lie when you should have told the truth? Or maybe you looked at a bad picture? Boys and girls, the Bible says if we die in our sins and they are not forgiven, then we can never go to be with Jesus in heaven. Sin separates us now and for all eternity, forever. That's a long time. John 8 verse 24 warns us that if we do not get saved, then we will be separated from God forever. Having to go away to a terrible place of punishment, much worse than a leper colony. This terrible place of punishment, the Bible calls the lake of fire. But guess what? I have good news. Jesus, who is God, died for you and me, and he took our punishment for sin on the cross. Jesus, who never sinned and is perfect, took your sin and my sin when he died on this cross for us. Jesus was our substitute, much less, much like, I should say, when you have a teacher at school that's sick and you have another teacher that comes in and teaches in place of the teacher who is sick. And that teacher is called your substitute teacher. But Jesus is our substitute because he is the only one who has never sinned. We were all born with sin from our first parents, from Adam and Eve. So Jesus knew that he had to come down from heaven to earth to wash away our sins with his cleansing blood that he gave for us on the cross when he was beaten, when he had the crown of thorns crushed in his forehead, and when he had the Roman soldier pierce his side with that big, fat, sharp sword. That's right, boys and girls. Jesus spilled out his blood to wash away our sins and to forgive us of our sins when we're willing to turn away from them and believe in Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Boys and girls, Jesus did not stay dead, but he rose again on the third day. He rose again from that grave, just like he said he was going to do to prove that he is God. Of course, you have never seen somebody come alive again from the dead. But someday you will, if you're saved at the rapture, you will see the people that died that were saved like my mother and father, and they will rise first faster than I can blink an eye, and they will meet with Jesus in the clouds because they were saved. And then the Bible says those of us that are alive and remain that, that are um, trusting in Jesus as our Savior, we will also rise up to meet them in the air and to be with Jesus and those saints forever. That's right. <clears throat> but the people on earth will be left behind for many, many terrible times until they go to the lake of fire. 
Boys and girls, in Ephesians 1, 7, it reminds us that Jesus is the one that gives us redemption. Now, that's just a big, long word that means that Jesus paid for our sins on the cross. We can't buy a ticket to heaven. Jesus already paid our way to go. All we have to do is call on the Lord and turn away from our sins and ask Jesus to be our Lord and Savior. The Bible says that it's through his blood in Ephesians 1, 7 that we are forgiven of our sins according to the riches of his grace. So that means, boys and girls, that God provided the way for us to be saved and we receive him as a gift, <clears throat> as an eternal gift that will last forever. Miss Heather would like to invite you to be saved right now if you have never Ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins. He will. He will not turn anyone away. He will forgive you and he will wash you of your sins. And he wants to take you to heaven, to be with him, to live with him forever. Boys and girls in Ecclesiastes 11, 2 also reminds us, Remember now thy creator, the one who made you, in the days of your youth, while you are still a child or a young person, like a teenager, because God wants you to be a success. He wants to teach you right from wrong, and he wants you to follow him all of your days so that he can bless you. So to become a child of God is as easy as saying your A, B, Cs. You don't have to say this exact prayer. You can say uh, a prayer to be saved in your own words because prayer is just like talking to your friend on the telephone. Prayer is talking to God. He is real. He is listening to you right now. And he wants for you to be forgiven so that you can get rid of your sin, so that you can be set free from your sin, so you can be forgiven of the shame and the guilt of your sin. So let's pray at this time. And you can either pray with me if you don't know how to pray, or you can say your own prayer to be saved if you are sorry for your sins and you want Jesus to be your Savior, because he's the one and only true God, boys and girls, and he is the only one that can save you. So let's pray at this time. Dear Lord Jesus, A, I admit I am a sinner. Please forgive me of all my sins, dear God. B, I believe you died for me on the cross. I believe you spilled out your blood for me. Please wash away my sins with your cleansing blood. And C, I confess you as my new Lord and Savior. Please write my name in your Lamb's Book of Life. Please help me to follow you all my days and to listen to your voice and to read your holy word, the Bible, so that I can learn right from wrong and so that I can please God with all of my days. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Boys and girls, if you just prayed that prayer right now, that's the most awesome decision you could ever make in your life because Jesus just wrote your name in his Lamb's Book of Life and no person can take that away from you. Now God has a beautiful plan for you. He wants for you to read the Bible every day, to pray, to go to church, give your money to missionaries, and he wants for you to tell everyone in the world about the great things that he has done for you. And he wants for you to invite your friends to Hope in God Bible Club so that they can have hope in Jesus just like you got hope in Jesus today. Boys and girls, I have one last thing I want to share with you before we go. Miss Heather made a turkey to remind us of what we learned today in Hope and Call Bible Club. What do you see on this turkey? Well, I see some beautifully colored feathers, and I also see some words written. Let me share with you in case you don't know how to read yet what it says. It says, I am thankful for God, the Bible, home and family, church, and food. What are you thankful for? Boys and girls, you can take a piece of paper today or a piece of cardstock, and you can put your hand on there and trace it with whatever you want, a crayon, a marker, or whatever you have at your house. And you can either draw feathers or buy some feathers for your turkey at Walmart like Miss Heather did. And I want to wish each and every one of you and your families a very happy Thanksgiving. And if you don't know where to find Hope in God Bible Club, this is where you can find it on these two channels. And I would love for you to share and like and subscribe that way other people other boys and girls your age can also hear the truth and have hope in god miss heather is going to tell you now 
Goodbye, and thanks again for joining us today here at Helping God Bible Club. Bye-bye.